the thoughts and ideas of people live long after they are gone. The works of people live, if they're good works, long after they're gone. Those that built the pyramids, they're gone. The pyramids remain for us to study and grow from the wisdom of those that once were but no longer are. Life is a continuum. So the coming of Allah, God, Mahdi, Messiah, the presence of God in the world is to produce what is called the resurrection of the dead. Okay. How? What do you mean, resurrection of the dead? The Holy Quran says they have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can't hear. They have a tongue, but they can't speak. Blind, deaf, and dumb. The Bible says the same thing. When you got eyes, but you can't see. When you got ears, but you can't hear. When you have a tongue, but you can't speak. You are considered mentally, spiritually, dead, in need of resurrection. Resurrection means to rise up again. Something that was up is now down and must be raised up again. Your people were once masters of the earth. If you study any African history, you know that when the Caucasian was walking around in the hills and cave sides of Europe on his all fours, Africans had built civilization. Civilization did not begin in Europe, in Greece, or in Rome. It began in Africa, and it was Africans that brought wisdom to Greece. Check it out. But look at you now. You are the children of the builders of the pyramids. What have you built lately? You are the children of the great master builders, architects of the universe. Oh, come on, fair can. How could Allah make man vicegerent. We stand in the place of Allah. If you are able to stand in the place of God, then you must be able to master the laws that govern what Allah created. Otherwise, you are unfit to stand in his place. The man that Allah made in the Quran called Adam, he asked the angels to bow down to Adam. Some of the scholars say the angels mean the forces of nature. Well, all right then. We'll take your scholarship. If angels here mean the forces of nature, and it, they were made to bow down and become subservient to the man that God made, that means that that man that God made had power to control those forces. You once had knowledge like that. You don't have that knowledge today. Why? Because you are dead. A dead man does not have what he had when he was alive. 
go, go to any dead man. I don't care how great he was. I used to love Billy Eckstein, Sarah Vaughn. We are old timers, you know. And some of you rappers, you love Tupac. You love Biggie. Well, now you go to the grave. See if Biggie and Tupac can write any uh, rap for you. Best thing you can do is study their rap and rap on till your end comes. But no dead man can do what he once did when he was alive. You are not able to do what you did when you were a living people because the enemy's world and the enemy's trick knowledge has put the black man so fast asleep till he's looked upon by the prophets as being a dead human being, dead mentally, dead morally, dead spiritually. And God said he would raise one from the dead and send that one to raise the others from the dead. You that are masons and shriners, you already understand that. Hiram was a master architect, but he got hit in the head. You are a master builder, but you got hit in the head by some ruffians. And they took you on a westerly course and buried you in the north country in a shallow grave. That's masonry. All Masonic secrets are built on you and what happened to you. That's why you've integrated everything else except the white shriners and the white masons. You're going to stay segregated. Because the secret of it all is you. And once you wake up to who you are, who they are, who God is, what time it is, then they can never rule you again. So the coming of God, according to the Bible, is out of the east to the west. And the coming of God is in the person of a human that is anointed with the power of God to exercise that power by the permission of Allah. It has to be a human to deliver you as it was a human that enslaved you. Okay. I want you to look at this. Now, when I mentioned last week the book of Habakkuk says God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran and his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. And it says, he stood, he, 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 not it. He stood and he measured the earth. His brightness was as the light or the sun. Horns were coming out of his hand, but there was the hiding of his power. Now, I want us Muslims, Christians, Jews, you don't know Master Farad Muhammad. You think we are in error for believing in him as Mahdi. Okay, then what I want you to do is give him a chance to tell you through Elijah Muhammad what he revealed. Then you go study. If he lied, then we can cast him aside. 
But if he told the truth, you're going to have to reason with this then. It says he stood and he measured the earth. He is a man that came among us. And he taught us actual facts. Every week I'm coming with more books, but now that which is actual is existing in fact or real existing now present current a fact is that which actually exists it's reality it's true why did he give us actual facts because you can't build any building until you know the actual facts. The problem with us is we've been believing what others tell us, building our world on what they tell us, but the actual facts we may not be acquainted with. How could the enemy rule us if we had the same knowledge that he has, regardless to your degrees? He has never shared with you what he has of knowledge. That's why when you come out of college, you go to him and look for a job because you are not prepared to make a job for yourself. Now, he stood and he measured the earth. Okay. He said, the total area, and this is in 1930, 71 years ago. I want you to go back in time with me to what America looked like 71 years ago. And look at the phenomenal progress that America has made in 70 years. And it ain't because America is so smart. It is because the presence of somebody came to America that you refuse to honor respect for coming to save you and me. Now, to make this subject even more uh, potent, Farad Muhammad was only among us three years and four or five months. That's all. He said he came to us from the holy city of Mecca. I don't know nothing about Mecca, never knew nothing about Mecca, till I heard Elijah Muhammad tell me about it. Now to make this even more convincing, Farah Muhammad comes to Detroit in a place called Black Bottom where you live in the deep ghetto and Farad Muhammad starts teaching going door to door like a say ordinary salesman this is what is meant in the scripture when it says he made himself of no reputation and became obedient even unto death. What does that mean? Here's a man. You don't know nothing about that man. If it were not for Elijah Muhammad, we would know nothing about Farad Muhammad. Now, who is this Elijah? 